What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Today I'm gonna cover the lighting basics. It's gonna be a very easy build to follow, so let's get started. All right, so first of all, we want to make sure that we have Lumen enabled. And for those total beginners that are wondering what is Lumen, well, Lumen is a fully dynamic global illumination and reflection system. It will basically give us amazing real-time results, so we definitely want to use it. So to enable it, let's go up into edit and open the price settings. Now I'm going to mention that I'm using the latest version of Unreal Engine 5.2, but what I'm going to basically cover today will not really change in all the Unreal Engine 5 versions, so you should be good. Now let's go down into the engine section until we see rendering. And on here let's go down until we see the dynamic global illumination method. In here we want to of course select lumen and the same with reflection method. Let's make sure that we have lumen. This is essential of course for this tutorial. Now also as an extra thing to be able to use the latest features and lighting settings and shadows, let's make sure that we have virtual shadow maps enabled. Well, selected. With that said, we can now go ahead and start covering the lighting actors. So for that, let me just go up here into file and create a new level to showcase everything. I'm gonna create a new basic level, so as I will have a floor, and let's hit create. On here, what I'm going to do is basically get rid of all the lighting, as I will not need it. I will only need the floor to showcase this. So let's begin by the first lighting actor. In this case, let's go into quickly add to the pride, and we can go into light. And here we will see the direction of light. Let's drag it here. This will be the most common light source that you will probably play with, especially as a beginner. It will basically just act as a sun, and it is essential to light outdoors, right? Like open wells. In this case, let me just drag a character here so I can preview this a bit better. So let me go into meshes and just get, for example, many simple. And just drag it into the scene. As you can see, we can select this, go into the rotation tool, and start rotating this. And it will, you know, change the shadows, light orientation, and so on. And basically, if we change, for example, the y-axis over here, we could simulate a time and day system. So, for example, as time progresses, we'll be basically rotating this actor to get what we want. Now, we have many options in here, and we go in the details panel. So, for example, we have the intensity. We can increase this or decrease this. We can change the light color, blue for example. Uh, we could change the temperature, so colder, warmer, and so on. So you can really play a lot with those settings. Now, the rest of them, I'm not gonna be covering them in this video as I'm just covering the extreme basics of everything, okay? So I'm gonna actually touch on another thing, which is the mobility. So we have three states on here especially for lighting. Really lighting will go into two stages, but in this case, we have three options. So the first one will be static. Basically, this is for fully based lighting, and this will be the fastest rendering. Now, the thing is that the lighting will not move, not even shadows, okay? So basically, this is to uh, capture the lighting, how it is, save it as data, and it will not move, interact with the world or whatsoever. It will just stay like that. Now then we will have stationary, which is something in between. As you can see, it is basically a partially baked lighting. Again, it will not be able to move or adapt to any other things, except for shadows that will basically adapt to mobile objects, okay? And then we'll go into the last, which is mobile. And this is basically total dynamic. So it will interact with the world. And it's basically how we are right now uh, previewing it in the viewport, okay? So, of course, it will be the slowest renderer, but it will give us the most features. And of course, with Lumen, it will be using all its features over here. So, for this tutorial, and really any beginner project that you do, it's really recommended to be doing mobile as it will just be the easiest for you as you don't have to worry about baking or anything else and everything will just work so that's why we want mobile it's going to be basically using all the features that lumen offers okay so now let's go ahead and move on into the next lighting actor so let me just select the direction of light and delete it so now i can just go into quickly add to the pride and go into lights and now i can just drag in my point light into the scene and as the name says, it uses a point light. So it would just basically give us a radius of lighting upwards. 
So we can change things as the intensity, the light color, the attenuation radius, which is how far it will go, the source radius, it's basically like the source size itself. And as you can see, as we increase this, the shadows will get smoother or sharper. So this is a very good thing to watch out. We also have more things, but I'm not gonna be touching them. The main features, uh, or well, parameters uh, are those that you're basically gonna be using. And again, mobile guys, we need to be using mobile, very important. Um, of course, not, not very important, you don't have to use mobile. It's just gonna be way easier for you as a total beginner to begin lighting your scene as you don't have to worry about other stuff and it will be totally dynamic. All right, so let's move on into the next lighting actor. So let's delete our uh, point light. Let's go back into the light section over here and let's put a spotlight. And as the name says, it is a spotlight. So for example, if you're, I don't know, lighting a theater <laughs> theater level, this will come in very handy and it will just be like a, uh, yeah, like a spotlight basically. So we can change the light intensity as you can see, the attenuation radius, so how far it will go, the uh, inner core angle. So we have two sections over here. We have the first uh, inner part, which will basically have a, a more intense lighting. And then the outer, which is gonna have a less intense uh, lighting. So as you can see, if not, we'll have a very sharp an edge, but now we have a smoother edge at the border. So you can really play with that. Let's go into the next uh, lighting actor. So we're going to go up here, go into lights and open up our rect light. And this is very similar to what we see in basically, um, you know, studio lights. When you're gonna do photography and so on, those that are mountain and tripods on like square, this is basically that lighting, okay? So for example, these are very handy for interiors and so on. Uh, for example, gonna do a, a, a lighting that is not like a lamp, uh, in terms of it's not like a bulb, this will come in very handy too. So again, you can change the lighting and so on, but this one has an extra parameter, which is the source width and source height, so you can change you know, the scale and so on as you need it. And again, you can change other stuff as the light color, attenuation radius, and so on. So with that, we pretty much have covered them. We just have uh, one left, which is the skylight. Now, the thing is that the skylight will not work as its own, as you can see. It will depend on other lighting too. It's basically like an extra thing I see almost. So we can just go and add a directional light. Now you will see that right now in our environment, the skylight will not do anything. And is that it will, to, in order to function, it will depend on other components too. Especially when I go here and select mobile and now take real time capture. As you can see, it will basically give us a warning that we will need a sky atmosphere, volumetric cloud, and so on. Because otherwise, it will be black. So this is more like an add-on. So I will cover it a bit later on, okay? But first of all, I want to uh, cover another last thing pretty much of lighting. So let's quickly just go here and, and put this in mobile back again. And I'm gonna be touching the emissive materials. So let's go into content, into a content browser. Just right click and create a new material. So let's name this something as M emissive. And this doesn't really matter, you see, an example. And in this material, as you can see, we have an emissive color output. So if I were now to hold the uh, key three and then left click, we have this node where we can just double click to open it and basically change the light color. So on here, for example, let's say that I'm gonna put it um, kind of bluish, okay? So I can just put it blue, as simple as that. So if I were to just plug this into the base color and apply it, and then for example, I don't know, add a sphere over here and assign this uh, material, it would just be normal blue, okay? Nothing crazy. But the thing is that we're we plugging it into the emissive color. So let's go ahead and do so. And you'll see what will happen here. As you can see right now, is glowing. If I apply now and go outside and then delete my directional light, it will start to produce a light as you can see. But if one, you know, uh, the thing is that right now the exposure is adapting to it. That's why now is even brighter. So 
if you want to control the exposure, what you can do is go into quickly add to the part, go into visual effects and add a pass processing value. Now this is very big, so I will not be covering you know the pass processing value in this tutorial, but I'm gonna just quickly go into Finity and it's enable this so it will cover the whole level. And then let's go into exposure and we can just click and take this both min and max EV100. And now we can set them to one and this will be a predetermined exposure. So it will not change. And now what we can do instead is go into the emissive material once again and multiply this by a value, which this will basically be the basically light intensity. So if I were to put five in here, as you can see, it's glowing a lot. And if I uh, go ahead and apply here in the scene now, it's glowing even more. And as you can see, it's basically going ahead and adapting to the world right now. And you can really play with the settings to get what you want. So if I'm going to put even the double this 10, for example, now it will be even brighter. So you can really play with the exposure compensation and the light intensities of your level to get what you want and the atmosphere that you're looking to and so on. All right, so let me just cover pretty much the last thing of this tutorial. So let me select this, uh, uh, well, let me say this level. So let me use uh, Control S and it's going to be um, lighting. And let me just go and create a new level just to showcase this. So let's go into basic and just get rid of the whole light folder. And now I'm going to show you a very quick way, an easy way of adding lighting into your existing level. So what we can do is just go into window and go into this environment light mixer. And this is basically a wizard. So what we can do is start clicking these buttons and it will start slowly generating our environment and lighting as you can see. And it will be setting everything as you can see everything will be set into mobile, which is what we want to be using Lumen. Now we can also go and set the skylight, but you can see that there's something going on and it's that real time capture has not been enabled. So let's make sure that that's enabled. As you can see, everything will start to shine. The reflections will be more accurate and so on. And this is what I was explaining about the skylight, which will basically just add some more compensation reflections and honestly use realism into your level so i see it more as an add-on okay more than the lighting property itself and then last last of all let's go into settings over here and you just want to mention that of course depending on your engine scalability settings which are your graphic settings your lighting will change of course right now i have it on high but if i were to change it to for example low the lighting will change so have that in mind when designing your uh, light for your level. For example, if you're touching the uh, reflections and compensation and so on of your lighting and you're in low and then you change it to high and suddenly everything is super bright and doesn't make sense, well, that will be a problem. So have that in mind when designing your light in your levels and so on. So that's it guys, if you found this too helpful, I will really appreciate you like the video and subscribe to my channel. I have lots of Unreal Engine 5 tutorials, so check them out. Remember that your private files will be available in the link in the description. Join my Discord server and follow me on all my socials. And now yes, with all I've said, bye bye.